Hi guys and welcome back to Studio One with me Gregor. So today we want to look at the chord track together, which was one of the main additions to Studio One in version 4.0. What the chord track allows you to do is to transpose or modulate any amount of tracks that you desire to a chord that you enter and it can be in a different scale and obviously used in a variety of ways, either at the production stage or all the way at the beginning of the songwriting stage. The possibilities with the chord track are truly endless, especially because it works not just with MIDI, but also with audio tracks, and it achieves stunning results at that. But before we really dive into the practice, let's first get the fundamentals right, understand how it truly works, and then in the second part we're going to look at some of the fun stuff. To open up the chord track, just click on its symbol here above the track list. The chord track is a globally active track. That means that every event happening at the same time as my chord track section is going to be affected potentially. As soon as I draw in a chord section here, you will see that the notes underneath are shifting to the specified chord. There are several ways for me to enter these chords. I can do so either by the keyboard, by just typing the key that I want. So by typing um, something like DM, I'm gonna get a D minor. If I'm just gonna type a C, I'm getting a C major. I can also double click and choose my desired chord from this circle of chords here. Or I can also activate the instrument input and just play the chord that I have in mind and you'll see that all of the notes are shifting to it respectively. So at first glance the chord track seems to be very similar to the arranger track but there's some very distinct differences. For starters the arranger track makes no exceptions. Everything that happens at the same point as your arranger section is gonna be affected when you move it around or delete it for instance. The chord track on the other hand only works on tracks that have a chord follow mode enabled. A scenario where this can be very useful is when you're working with drums and you don't want those to be transposed as well when you move your chords around. Otherwise, if you're working with something like, say, Impact XT, all these pad assignments wouldn't work anymore. So it's very useful that it's a far more selective working track than the arranger track. With this in mind, it's probably more accurate to compare the chord track to the tempo track because much like the tempo track, where you have to set a tempo mode for each track, the chord track is also adjustable on a track by track basis and there you have to set a chord follow mode. So let me talk you through each of the chord track follow modes really quickly so that you get a better idea of what each of them does. By default, follow chords is set to off. The chord track has no effect on a track in this mode. In parallel mode, all notes of the affected track are shifted by the difference in semitones between the source and target root note. In our case, the difference between C and A is three semitones, so all notes are shifted three semitones down. Then, each note of the source chord gets adjusted to match the specified target chord, if necessary. In this example, we are modulating from a major to a minor key, so as a result, the third, which is currently sitting on C-sharp, is shifted one semitone down additionally. As you can see, this mode tries to maintain the chord-note relationships in the musical content as much as possible, which may result in some out-of-key notes sometimes, especially if the original chord has not been detected correctly, so use with caution. In narrow mode, each note in the affected track is shifted to the nearest note in the specified chord of the chord track. The bass mode is a special mode for monophonic bass parts, so it's great for everything that plays only one note at a time. The scale mode is only available to audio tracks. In this mode, notes in the affected track are snapped to the nearest scale note instead of chord note in the target chord. Years later in this young lady. Years later in this young lady. 
Another similarity between the chord track and the tempo track is that the chord track usually yields the best results when the original chord is already known, much like the tempo track works the best if it already knows the original BPM. Fortunately, much like with the scale tempo feature, Studio One can help you with the chord detection and make this process incredibly easy. In order to have Studio One detect your original chord, simply drag your selected event, no matter if it's audio or MIDI, onto the chord track and you'll see the chords showing up like it's magic. Last but not least, there's the universal mode, which is also only available to audio tracks. In case the original chord detection doesn't work for you, maybe because you work with highly complex harmonic material, this mode is the one to choose. The great advantage of universal mode is that you don't need to know the original chord. In this mode, notes in the affected track are forced to follow the scale notes of the target chord, so it's really great if you don't know the original chord, if it hasn't been detected correctly, or if you just want to use the chord track really quickly on a couple of melodic loops for instance. What also makes the chord track unique is the ability to toggle it on or off and as you can see all of the notes are shifting from the original position to the specified chord back and forth as I toggle it on and off. Alright so that's enough theory on the chord track. As you might have heard it works just great on both audio and MIDI but there's also a very creative side to the chord track that you might have not considered before and that is to use it as a blueprinting tool when you're starting out your song. To see what that looks like, please tune into the next episode. Until then, thank you so much for watching.